I get to introduce formally Karen, who, who has just been up here but never was formally introduced. Karen Anderson is the manager of the Bezos Family Immunotherapy Clinic at the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, a clinic dedicated to supporting scientific advances in cellular immunotherapies. She was involved with the design and planning for the opening of the clinic in October 2016 and has helped support immunotherapy program development at the SCCA. Her experience includes roles as a BMT staff member, staff nurse, research nurse, and as an oncology clinical nurse specialist prior to launching the immunoclinic, immunotherapy clinic. She became an RN in 2004, earned her master's degree from the University of Washington in 2009, and her professional interests include infusion therapy, nursing professional development, and nursing research. She's passionate about helping nurses understand cellular therapies to support patients getting the best possible outcomes, and she's writing an article, so any of you who have done that know it's a grand undertaking. Please welcome Karen. I'm so happy to be here today. Um, and first of, and foremost, I want to thank every single one of you um, for attending this conference. I know many of you traveled, um, some of you across the country to get here. And you may have realized by now that in June, it's not always the warmest place here in Seattle, but I'm hoping that our January weather, which we call it here lovingly in Seattle, is clearing and that you'll be able to get out and about and enjoy our um, beautiful city this evening before we reconvene tomorrow. I don't have slides. Um, I'm really here just to um, close out your day. And. Um, I like to think that your attendance at this uh, conference today was because like myself and my many illustrious colleagues that you have met, uh, that you're here because you have a deep and abiding interest in really how to improve cancer care for our patients and know that this um, therapy, cellular immunotherapy, um, offers a lot of opportunity for us and for our patients. Um, maybe your goal was to learn what this whole cellular immunotherapy thing was all about. Um, it's kind of a Greek language unless you're working in it, I know, right? Um, that Google translator we need for, for cell therapies. Um, maybe you're here because you're just on the cusp of opening your first CAR T cell product um, or program, and it seems absolutely daunting to think that you're going to start treating patients. Maybe you're here because, like me, um, you happened to have a conversation with your CNO, um, and you said, man, I would really like to have some nurses out there or other people that are working in this area that know what I'm talking about, that I can bounce some ideas off, because it really feels like we're out here paving this way, and it's really hard to know if what you're doing is the best and the right thing to do. And I hope today, you heard um, from people about what they're doing and that you get some good takeaways and that you take some names home with you, that you take um, some ideas home with you, and that you um, have a better network to really bounce these things off. Um, I know that's what I've heard today that from a couple of people already has been a wonderful takeaway is that sometimes just knowing somebody else is in there with you in it is a validation that's going to take you and feed you um, as we continue to build everything that we need to do to bring this therapy to patients. But whatever your reason is uh, for attending today, we um, really, really hope that um, that you get something um, that's gonna, like, like Jim talked about, that's gonna help you feed yourself personally. Because I know and I think about my colleagues, one of the things that seems is that the list can be very, very long of tasks that we need to achieve. And I think what we're all gonna be um, really struggling with in the next couple of years is keeping up with the rate of change, um, keeping up with the new things that we're seeing, and we're gonna need to figure out those things uh, that are gonna keep us um, from like T cells being exhausted. So, um, so Jim, um, thank you for bringing that up, that supportive care, and I think that personal piece that I think is gonna be really important for all of us. Um, so it, today it almost reminded me that it, it feels like, I know in my work, that T cells have just kind of emerged from out of nowhere, right? They're just suddenly appeared, um, and here they are shaking everything up, but hopefully Dr. Davidson, Dr. Gilliland, and Dr. Applebaum's talks really showed you that there has been so much progress that has actually taken decades to get to where we are today. And um, 
we still have so much progress to make. We have these therapies now in the clinic, but we now need to figure out how to deliver them in a better and safer way for patients. But I think about patients that I previously cared for that had relapsed in refractory disease, that um, didn't have, had transplants and relapsed shortly thereafter, that potentially would have had different therapies open and options had they um, been diagnosed today. And I, um, I need to think of those faces, you know, and those names, um, and they, they're an encouragement to me um, to help us continue forward because this is a new day, and, um, and we are offering these really exciting things to patients um, that they didn't previously had. My interest in cellular immunotherapies was truthfully um, solidified by seeing my first patient with um, 90%, more than 90% blasts in their marrow with ALL, achieve a complete remission within that first month. <clears throat> I'd worked in transplant for about 10 years, and I just knew, you know, whenever you even saw minimal residual disease after some of our therapies that, you know, we were, we were stuck, we were in a hard place, and, um, <clears throat> and that patient responded. It absolutely blew my mind. Um, for those of you that have seen those experiences, you know what I'm talking about. Um, for those of you that have not yet seen it, you will. And it will actually um, be something that's going to power you through writing the many policies and procedures and the training sessions and everything else that you need to do. So make sure you remember those patients. Um, it's um, interesting um, that it's truly remarkable that we're in a day that we're talking about how to coordinate with um, commercial companies to take a cell product from a patient, genetically modify it, send it across the country, and get it back in two to three weeks. So it's no wonder that it seems like we have to put in a lot of infrastructure. I mean, just that concept in and of itself um, is pretty astounding. Um, and while this is absolutely touched on what a multidisciplinary team it takes to be able to deliver these therapies, um, this is a nursing conference, and I just want to speak to, I think, what nursing really can bring to this therapy. Uh, we bring a lot of different cross-disciplinary kind of skill sets. The, uh, the um, association, for, uh, the ANA, uh, for nurses basically says that we're kind of the glue that holds the healthcare system together. And I do think that there is a very special place for nursing in this, um, in this realm to be able to kind of hold patients and, and work with patients along the entire trajectory of their care. Uh, we are oftentimes that patient, like they were talking about at, Memor uh, at Memorial Sloan Kettering, talking to that patient when that patient's coming into your system. You might be administering the product. You might be hearing the patient telling you, I've got a bill and I have no idea what I'm gonna do to pay this bill. Um, we really are, um, one of the key care providers that can help refer patients to all of these other supportive cares and all of these other ancillary services that they're going to need. And so we need to really speak up as we develop our policies and procedures and our pathways um, because we have such an important insight into how these things are actually going to work well in our workplaces. Um, I'm consistently um, encouraged that we are improving so rapidly we can hardly keep up with our own improvements. Um, and I think that as I look uh, around the room, I know that what I've heard just from networking a little bit is that you all are trying all sorts of different things. And I think that's where um, this forum and other forums that are going to come in the future are so important uh, because our fundamental great nursing practice really works. Um, and we need to start to apply and try some of those things that we've tried in bone marrow transplant and in other therapies. Do they work for CAR T cells? We need to work with our IT departments to figure out how do we actually structure things so that they work for patients. And then we need to bring them back and we need to share and present them. Um, so if you're trying things, whatever it is, I hope to see you at future conferences with abstracts and all sorts of things uh, because we're not alone. It's obvious by this room uh, that there are a lot of people out there trying to figure out how to do this. Um, and if you're trying to develop something even like that scan model, that's a really interesting thing that people are going to want to know about. So don't underestimate the work that doesn't feel like maybe it's as scientific as a lot of these Kaplan-Meier curves that you've seen up here, 
This is the real nuts and bolts of how you actually make a therapy work in the healthcare environment. So I just hope that you take from this conference um, some takeaways and things you can try, some names, um, some auto dial phone numbers that you want um, when you're trying things on and that we really, um, we work together to really help bring this therapy into the workplace and into the healthcare environment in a way that it makes it the best possible for patients. Thank you.